Google Assistant gets new audio privacy updates, cookie stuffing ad blockers get caught, and Click2Gov is hacked again. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for September 24, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire over on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire, and now on to the news. Yesterday, Google published an update to their blog about some Google Assistant updates that affect user security and privacy. The company explained that they heard concerns heard concerns about how they were processing Google Assistant audio, which would be used to improve the speech technology for different languages. This audio was being saved and transcribed by language experts. So basically, some of the Assistant conversations were actually being listened to by real human beings. Google then apologized and they stated that they immediately paused that human transcription service, conducted a review, and are now making those changes. So for starters, data is not retained of audio recordings, but if you want that to happen, you can opt in to the voice and audio activity setting whenever you're setting up Assistant. Any interactions can be deleted at any time by the user. Google also is updating the settings to highlight more information about turning on voice and audio activity and be more transparent about the fact that humans do review the audio. Existing users can review their settings options and confirm preferences before any additional human reviews occur. Again, those will also be opt-in. Google is also stating that audio snippets are not associated with any user account and about 0.2% of all audio is actually listened to by their language experts. An extra layer of privacy filters will now be the norm, though Google does not go into details about how that works technically. Lastly, the company will be adding sensitivity levels to the assistant prompt words, so unintentional activations of Google Home devices should be less common. These can often be more of a privacy concern than the intentional uses of the smart home devices, so any of those errant recordings will be deleted if they were accidental. Changes like these are positive, but they should not have been a problem in the first place. Consumers should be given more transparency about the type of data being recorded or stored, even if that data is being used to make devices more efficient and better. All of these changes should go into effect later this year, although the exact dates were not specified. Google has just removed two very popular ad blocking extensions from the Chrome Web Store due to their use of permanent cookie stuffing. Cookie stuffing is when a website or a browser extension stuffs extra information into user cookies, sometimes called affiliate cookies, which can be used to hijack traffic from legitimate sources. The additional cookie data keeps track of browsing, including online transactions. The perpetrator can gain additional income from the data by making affiliate commissions off of user transactions. So in this case, Adblock by Adblock Inc. and Ublock by Charlie Lee were both doing the cookie stuffing. It appears that the two extensions were made specifically to do cookie stuffing, and they used the names of even more popular ad blocking extensions to do it. Ublock Origin by Raymond Hill and Adblock by GetAdblock.com are the real deal, and they are still available in the Chrome Web Store. The two malicious ones were found in searches for ad blockers and were available as top options. They both did indeed block advertisements like they said they would, so users were unaware of their actual underlying motive, and they actually got good reviews. As for the attack, they did this by modifying cookie files which are generated whenever you go to certain websites, and adding a parameter that allowed them to earn a commission from payments made on those sites. This would happen on lots of popular websites like AliExpress, Booking.com, LinkedIn.com, and a lot more. The apps waited for 55 hours total before starting that kind of behavior, and they would only stop if a user opened up the Chrome Developer Tools. Both of the applications use the original Adblock extension code as a basis for their own code. Both apps were removed after Andre Meshkov, co-founder and CTO of AdGuard, reported on the discovery. Currently installed copies were to be disabled for user browsers, and they had over 1.5 million downloads combined. Now, disappointingly, the two malicious applications were allowed to be on the web store since Google's policies allow for multiple extensions with the same name. 
The malicious behavior did spur Google to finally remove the bad actors. Google has proposed a solution which is called Manifest V3, which would limit the capabilities of extensions to improve overall performance, security, and privacy. But according to Meshkov, these would not prevent cookie stuffing. According to the EFF, Manifest V3 does not change observational APIs that are available to extensions, so they could still observe data. It would also not touch content scripts, which it give all extensions the ability to interact with the contents of web pages. So users are left to protect themselves. Meshcop does offer up some recommendations, including only installing extensions from brands you trust, ask yourself if you really need the extension in the first place, and be wary of raving reviews that could be fake. You can also install extensions from trusted developer websites instead of through the Chrome Web Store. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. Each and every one of you is so valuable, and I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed. That is my next Patreon goal, so if you want to help, check out my community. The link is in the description below. And also a huge thanks to my Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. Back in 2017 and again in 2018, the online self-service bill payment portal for many city governments was hacked, compromising 300,000 payment cards and making 2 million USD in revenue. The portal, which is called Click2Gov, is now being hit again, with records being dumped onto the dark web, according to researchers after the discovery. Eight different cities so far have been hit, of which six were also previously hit during the last attack. Gemini advisory security firm researchers found the data and reported on it on September 19th in a blog post. This new wave has affected 20,000 records across the eight cities, and it began in August of 2019. Gemini Advisory noted that several of these cities did have updated patches on their system, but they were still being attacked, telling them that other issues must be at place. The cities included Deerfield Beach, Palm Bay, Milton and Coral Springs in Florida, Bakersfield in California, Pocatello in Idaho, Broken Arrow in Oklahoma, and Ames, Iowa. According to the Post, keyed-in cards were affected, but automated bill payments were not. Locally hosted systems were affected, while cloud-hosted instances were not. Cardholders in all 50 states were affected, even if they didn't live there. If they did do business with the city governments, or they held property there, or they traveled to one of those cities and they had to make a payment or a ticket payment on the portal, then they could also be affected. Central Square Technologies, the company that markets Click2Gov, has stated that they have taken mitigating actions against the issue and the problem is now closed, though they did not explain any details about how the breach occurred or why it affected some customers that did have up-to-date and patched systems. Given that the attackers are obviously using some form of updated attack to hit the same targets again, even with updated software, this is an excellent example of an attacker's willingness to target victims more than once. As consumers, keep an eye on your credit or debit card details and potentially request a new card from your bank if you have used the Click2Gov site for payments in any of those eight cities. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you so much to David, Cyber Apex, Dr. Robert, Guillaume, North Mendo, Bateri, Darkas Vim, and Ben, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you all. You are so awesome, and I appreciate you. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet.